Okay, it's time for the Mega Van update. It's been just over a year, uh, and I've got to confess, I have made one mistake. Time. I have not allowed enough time to finish this bloody project. No, but I have got a working van. Uh, I'm going to come on to that and I'm going to show you around some of the things that I reckon I've done right, some of the things I've done wrong. There's a lot of temporary stuff in there and I'll tell you why that has been a good idea. If you can hear by the side of me, I've actually inherited these two uh, reprobates here. <laughs> so if you hear any noise, um, this is also added to the van and things I need for the van. These two, <laughs> they've made it. Let's have a look at the van. <laughs> Let's have a look. Um, I'm gonna say, uh, it is just for people who don't know, a Ducato, Ducato. We bought it, it's galvanized, blah, blah, blah. It's the highest roof version. It's the H3 and the L4. So it's the highest and the longest. Would I change that? Definitely not. I would always go for this high one. It's not as good looking. I won't lie to you, it's got a bit of a front on it, but um, it's definitely worth it with space. Um, this thing, <laughs> when you get to my age, um, this step here, in and out the van, makes a big difference. There are electric ones you can get, but they're like 500 euros. This thing, a couple of quid. So. This is the van. Now, you're probably thinking, Ben, it doesn't look much different, but we have added a few things. So I'm going to just run through quickly the things that I think are essential and you cannot do without. Firstly, these things. Sports craft, swivel seats. I mean, this changes this whole space. If you are thinking, I mean, obviously we're lucky because there's only two of us in the van and two dogs. But with two people in this van, having just two seats in the front, they spin around, this whole area becomes a livable area. We've got um, a double seat that I've put in here. Now this was meant to be um, a metal frame I put through the, um, through the chassis, but I was so running out of time before I went to the Canaries, I literally made this box where, with the old man, my dad. Um, and it's just a wooden box. Um, screwed to the floor so it's not a proper seat but it has been very useful obviously um storage inside here i've got all the electrics um and all the other stuff um i've got the light switches here i've got all different uh yeah did those myself yeah i'm very impressed i know you are uh, so i've got that's quite a cool box um as you can see a beautiful table now this is not um, fixed to the wall. It is meant to be, it's going to be a proper thing. We bought this for outside living, but we put it up here just as uh, one day to eat and it has stayed there ever since. It's not moved. It has been perfect. It's, it looks big compared to a lot of the campers I've seen, but I think it's actually the perfect size. The only problem is with this, the leg is in the way and when you do it properly, there'll be a leg in the middle. Uh, but I think that has been uh, super useful. Uh, I'm gonna put links to some of this stuff in the description below so you can see it because those swivel seats, sports craft seat ones we've got, sports craft, have been amazing. And I've actually put, just going back to the seats, I've put a smaller box on the bottom. So uh, when you get the seats, obviously the, the, the spinny, the rotator raises the seat by a little bit and then you can actually get a new box, a smaller box on the bottom. And I think that was well worth doing, um, but definitely get these. Um, another amazing thing, this fridge. Now I've owned one of these, which is a different mate, a Waco over in Australia. And I've been using that for like four or five years. This is amazing. It's, uh, it's obviously a top loader from the top. Now, the reason you might think, well, why is that? Why haven't you got one of those open ones? Now imagine this fridge is on the floor. If this fridge is on the floor, um, when you open the door, if you have anything on the floor, you can't actually open the door. It's a nightmare. With this, opens from the top, you reach in. But also, the main thing with the side load ones, when you open it from the side, all the cold air drops out, and when you shut it, it has to you know, load back up and, and get back to being cold. Whereas this, it all stays down the bottom end and you lose less cold. And this has not missed a beat. Um, I should tell you, we've got a 320 watt solar panel on the roof and we have never lacked power. We've been charging laptops off a little inverter. We've been uh, obviously charging phones and everything. And it, we've got two big batteries, two um, 110s, I think. So two 
20 altogether amp hours of battery. They're good batteries as well. I spent some decent money on uh, a Haze, I think it is, battery. Again, I'll put the links below and they have not missed a beat. Obviously, we've only lived in it for the summer and not really lived in it properly, but still, interesting though, not missed a beat. Um, storage. Now, that is the main thing I've got to tell you. You think you've got enough storage? You haven't got enough storage. I'm going to tell you that for sure. Um, and we have had to add, we came back from the Canaries, I've had to add these um, these cabinets in here. Now, these are just rough ones. I, they were really easy. I just put a, a baton on the top, a baton here, and just screwed them in. So, But they're they're solid as a rock. They just screwed into the floor and a bit into the metal. Um, they're not the best. I won't lie. Um, they're not the best, but they're definitely doing the job. Um, again, I'm going to take them out and build some proper ones. We've put one above the bed, which I already know is too small. We can actually um, build this down a bit because we sleep widthways in this one. I'm just going to get up. This is the good thing about the Decato. This is me. I'm... Uh, not touching the sides we're pretty high up sleep width ways this is the king size mattress ikea ikea special it's bloody comfortable but you can see got a lot of room where the feet are there and we can actually build this cabinet down i reckon about there when it won't be a problem uh, and we'll get more storage switches when you're in bed you definitely need the the switches on hand you know my switches are down there uh by the box and they're definitely not easy to get to. We need to have some more up here. I've actually added a USB cable in the wall just to make things uh, quite simple. Um, dogs are going crazy. <laughs> I've got to mention this. This is one of the must buys. This is uh, the fan. It's a Max Air fan. And this has literally saved the dog's lives in the canaries. You can see there's a lot of canaries dirt still up there. It needs to clean because it has been working literally constantly every day when we're in the canaries. It's like the best air conditioning. Now it sucks in, out. I don't know if you can see um, what's on there, but it's you can set from 10% to 100%. And on 50%, you can hardly hear it. Obviously 100 when we rack up the, the pressure on it. I don't know if you can hear it, but as long as it gets a bit more noisy, that's 100. And then as we get down to like 30, you can't hear it. But that has been literally a lifesaver or a dog saver. Um, I'm going to just come down from here. Um, so far, we haven't had the cushions made. <laughs> Um, the cushions took a bit of a hit. I don't know if you can see that. The dogs kind of really liked them when we first when we first had the van. They've calmed down a bit since, but we've got to make a proper cushion for that. Um, these things, storage. Again, it's all about storage. In the van, you realise these things, they don't look like much. This is from the Chinese shop. Oh, I'll pick another one up. I don't even do it. They're that strong, these things, from the Chinese shop. And they are great for anything. You can hook them onto places, hang a towel if you want to put a curtain up or whatever. Because we're not ready in the van, these things, I'm not joking, I can't imagine how useful these things are. And normal pegs as well. Pegs. Pegs and curtains and bits of rope. And we've had to put these on just to store stuff. Obviously, this is going to change. Um, got to talk to you about toilets. Yes, I'm going to talk to you about toilets. Porter potty. Now, when I first built the van, I'm not having a shower, not having a toilet. Don't need that. The living in the van, you realise you might need, especially with the girlfriend in the van as well, you might need a toilet. So I'm already thinking of adding a uh, a wooden step in here where one of those little porter potties, just in case you get caught in a place where you can't just nip into the bushes. You know. At the moment, the dog stuff live in here, dog food, and we need to rework that. Um, and we're obviously going to build a kitchen unit here. Now, my plan with the kitchen unit with this fridge is to have it on um, have it on rollers. So the fridge would be pretty much here like that, and it would be in a kitchen unit with the hobs and the sink, and this pulls out the bottom both sides, so you can access it from the outside where you want a nice beer on a hot day. Uh, or otherwise. That's the plan. I've got to show you these because if you saw my video with Mark Paré a few years ago, I was kind of excited by these and I was that excited. And after the canaries of putting the silver things up on the windows and on the front, I've managed to invest in a, in a set of these uh, Rimis blinds. 
and they just flip over like that. And that, you cannot imagine, when you're living in a van, you've got to do this every day. This is super easy, like blackout blinds, and they just slide back and then click into place. They're all hidden, they're super easy to fit. I fitted both these side ones in like probably 15 minutes each, took hardly any time at all. Like I say, when you want to shut them, you just pull them across and they're done. Super easy. I haven't actually put the front one on yet. I do have the front one. I'm going to put it on, but these things are amazing. They're not the cheapest. Uh, again, I'll put the link below, but I personally think they have, they have saved uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of hassle, a lot of hassle. Um, I can't think that I've missed too much, but we're going to talk about the garage because uh, before I go, You'll notice this wooden flooring here. Obviously it's not wood, this is uh, vinyl covering. Uh, this is a must. In here, obviously with the wetsuits coming in, it gets wet. The one thing I've got to do is uh, put something in between here. You can see the water's ingressing into the wood. So I'm going to have to do that a lot better. This Again, it was all temporary when I did it. And then this carpet as well is a waterproof carpet. Um, you can brush it off with a rubber brush. It actually is really pretty good. And it's nice to have something nice under your feet when you're a bit cold. Right, let's go on to the garage. Okay, let's check the garage out. Um, I haven't actually looked what's in the garage. I haven't cleaned it. I'm slightly scared. It's not too bad, it's not too bad. Here we go. So this is the garage. It's not quite how I had imagined it. Again, we've run out of time. Um, as you can see, I've got the... Uh, let's start with the doors. I've got the wetsuits on the doors, um, which work really well. The only problem is, as you can see, with the wet wetsuits, this uh, takes the water in. So I'm thinking of putting a plastic tray here, which would catch the water. There's, a, there's a, definitely a better way of doing that. Um, but it, it works to keep them out, hangs them. Can have dry wetsuits there or wet wetsuits there, either way, but there's definitely a better system for it. What I do want to do, and I've seen a lot of people with the vans, is maybe put the extensions on the door with those clips. I've seen quite a few of the top riders do that, and I think it works, because at the moment, I have my extensions in a big box, and as you can see, with a couple of sups in, I've got the foils in the back, toolbox, wetsuit boxes, dry clothes. This shelf, as you can see, it's pretty bowed. There's a lot of weight, but this, this extra space that I've got from having the big long van, can be used a lot better but this space is super needed i just need to organize it um the garage now i'm just going to try and pull a board out there's an optimum um distance to put these shelves because that's quite nice but as you can see i don't know if you can see in here i've got wooden racks now i've got these wooden racks so i can take them out if i need to so i'm just going to pull a few boards out now just so you can see Okay, so this is the really bad system that I've designed and there's definitely a much better one. Again, run out of time and I just used some offcuts of plywood. Um, one thing I've noticed, this is square wood. I've put that carpet on the top, which is nice, keeps the boards, uh, you know, nice and, uh, you know, they're not getting scratched on the wood. But the problem is with the sharp edges of the wood, when you pull in the board in and out with the foot straps, they catch. So. I think the best thing would be to use an old mast, a broken mast or rounded wood at least because it would stop them getting caught because when it's the gap isn't big enough for the board and the strap, it catches and it can be a bit annoying. Um, as you can see, I've used this um, wood, the vinyl, and I have basically created a... Um, what have I created? I've created a a bathtub I suppose so it's all waterproofed it goes up it goes all the way along the side on the floor up the sides to that distance above the wheel arches so it does that on both sides and I've also gone up the front as well so what it means is the water cannot get down to the bottom of the van it all runs to the back and then at the back of the van um, I've basically rolled it over the wood and glued it to the metal so this is uh, definitely super important the water doesn't go back under the wood uh, it's been super useful that I think uh, but obviously there's a lot needs to change in the garage area I'm, I'm really happy with the way the vinyls worked keeping the wet away um, I need to sort these boxes out at the side just lots more to do but on a whole 
we've got enough space, that's for sure. There's definitely enough space. I gotta see this. 17 years old, I got this as a birthday present. Um, and this is the first van I've actually owned where I could put it on. It took a while, didn't it? Nearly 20 years to get my own van to put it on. Yes, yes, yes. So there we go. Um, that is it for the mega van or the mega kennel. Look at these two reprobates over there. Um, they're definitely loving the van. Obviously, there is things I'm going to take out. The, the wall cabinets are going to come out because uh, the, the basic plan was to put proper plywood with the, the nice lining. But I looked how much it was and I thought, God, if I make a mistake or don't get the measurements right, it's going to cost me a fortune. And we had a lot of plywood at my dad's house and I basically nicked it <laughs> and made these just to see how it would be. So they're all coming out and we're going to replace it all. So stay tuned. This van is going to be ongoing, I have a feeling, for a good time yet. Um, thanks for watching. So there you go. I know it's not finished, but you've got to remember, if you guys are doing a van, the main thing is you're out on the road using it. I wouldn't get too bogged down with all the details and stuff unless you've got a lot of time. The main thing is it's practical. You get gear in the back, you can sleep in it, you can pretty much cook with a couple of hobs, you've got your fridge in. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff going on in the van, but I promise, I promise I will finish the van. Obviously moving to Portugal, that has been the main problem that has happened in my life. Uh, so there's been a lot going on, uh, but I will endeavour to finish it and I will give you some more information. You know, there's a lot of guys doing vans and I know when I was doing it, just the measurements of how far do you put the table from the seat? And this sounds really daft, but when I was doing my van, I was like, I really want to know exactly how far and how high that should be. Uh, if that's of any interest to you or the batteries or the electrics and how I did it, um, maybe I will do a more in-depth video. If I get enough comments, if not, no worries, we'll leave leave it there. Uh, but I have to say, it has been the best investment I've done. I've now got to import the thing to Portugal, which is proving difficult and it's on the wrong side, but I cannot bear to do the van again. No way. Um, so there you go. Thanks for tuning in and, and sticking with the project. I will finish it. I promise it's going to be uh, pimp uh, one day. One day. Uh, videos uh, that we've had on the channel, subscribe and thanks to everyone for uh, being a member. The members are chipping in the beer money and you are definitely keeping the channel alive. Uh, stay safe, everybody. Stay safe.